This particular tutorial is for the dashboard. Now there's a lot of information on the dashboard, so I'm going to work through it in sections to make sure you see everything that's available. So first of all, I want you to see on the monthly template, a lot of different information has been entered. So we're basically in a complete initialized state and ready to move forward. Also, on the daily transactions, you'll see I've entered in advance transactions for all of January and some transactions for February as well. On the dashboard, we have the current balance, which is just like the current balance on the daily transactions sheet. So this reflects just the account balance, not all of the credit card transactions, but specifically the account. So that's column E on daily transactions. Again, same thing reflected here. So you always have a point of reference. Just remember that this account balance, it's based on the transactions entered for the account, but it's also based on today's date. So if there are transactions entered on the daily transactions worksheet that are in the future, they're not going to be included in that balance display. Before I jump into the sections, I want to show you on the left, again, use the plus sign to expand a section. You'll see there is a legend. So relatively small, but important information here. When you see a reference with a green background, that's going to be actual information. So based on transactions you've entered and data in the past, so to speak. When you see blue, that's going to indicate future or forecasted amounts. When you see yellow, this is going to identify the current month. And when you see a light red background, that will show you amounts owed on your credit cards. Let's work through the first section, year at a glance. So we have a number of references here. First you'll notice we have all of the months right up until February of the following year. Now, these year references within the file are dynamic. They're going to be based on the starting date and specifically year that you entered in monthly template. So if we look at monthly template, this is designated to begin on the 1st of January, 2020. So the years are displayed as 2020 until the January and February of the following year. For each month column, there's information to represent what's happening in the account. So first of all, you have the starting balance. The starting balance literally is going to be at the beginning of that month what was the balance in the account? Again, not credit card transactions. We're talking about the account itself, the account balance here. And correspondingly, there's an ending balance that will represent the last day of that month in that year. What was the final balance? There are also transactions. Now, this is a little bit different because it depends on whether we're looking at actual information or forecast information. So for example, if you look at the month of January, since our current date is the 18th of February, January is in the past, so this column is based on actuals. Versus if we were to look at March, for example, since we are in February, March is completely in the future, and you'll see this is in blue background. So the transactions listed in January, those are actually 
specific to the actual transactions logged on the daily transactions worksheet. Truly information that's been logged. The daily transactions during March are not based on the daily transactions worksheet. Those are based on the monthly template. All the information that was entered there provides expectations of what will occur. So the total of all of those transactions, the income plus the expenses, are all related to what is anticipated to occur. Now let's look at the current month. The current month is displayed with a blue background because we don't know that these are accurate representations yet because the month hasn't finished. So the current month, again you'll see it's denoted by a yellow background here for the month, the current month is a composite of actual and forecasted information. So literally up until the date of today, we're looking at actuals. But then after today, it switches and looks at the expectations from the monthly template. Generally speaking, the transactions and the ending balance of the current month are fluctuating until all of the transactions for that month have been entered. Now let's look at the information below the bar here. So there's a monthly minimum balance and a monthly maximum balance. This is just reference information. Let's say you were planning a vacation or planning to contribute to your retirement savings. Maybe you want to see, generally speaking, throughout the year, what are your account balances? When do you have money and when are you in danger of being out of money? The minimum and maximum monthly balances give you that year-at-a-glance information for your account. Again, the account, not the credit card expenses, the account balance itself. These do have color-coded backgrounds. The color that is displayed is based on what you entered in the monthly template. So let's look again in the monthly template. Remember, there is a minimum account balance, and there's also an amount at which warnings will appear for that account. So in the monthly minimum balance, if you drop below that account minimum, then it's going to turn red. So for example, in January, in our imaginary account, we dropped below 1500, which was the account minimum balance. If we were above the account minimum balance, but below the account warning, then that cell would turn orange. So again, you'll have that warning of orange, and red, of course, means you've already dropped below. But of course, keep in mind, in the actual activity, that is reality. But when we're looking at the forecasted information, this is just giving you a heads up of situations where you are likely to hit those account minimums and the, the warning minimums. The next two rows are again related to the account minimums and the account balance information. These rows will only contain data if the minimum or the warning numbers have been reached. And they won't contain the numbers, they'll contain dates on which those values are reached. So the warning before minimum, again, the monthly template, the warning before minimum is 2000. And the minimum balance is 1500. So you might be wondering, how on earth did we reach the minimum balance? It says it was reached on the 1st of January, but the balance was 2434. Well, let's look at the transactions. 
So if we look at transactions on January 1st, 365 and 90 and 50, that's just over $500, $505 with a starting balance of 2434 that takes us below 2000 and 2000 is our minimum for warnings. So that's why that's displayed for the minimum warning balance. So that's accurate. And when is the minimum balance reached? On the 15th of January. So again, if you went back through all the transactions and totaled what the balance would be on the 15th, it is below 1500 so it displays that for you so these are really great to give you a heads up in the future of when things are looking a little close to those minimums or the warnings and you can adjust your spending so that's year at a glance Let's look at our next section, credit card balances and due dates. So every credit card is listed here. So remember, there are six possible credit cards you can enter. And in this worksheet, we had Amex, Visa, MasterCard, and Costco. The last two were not entered. They were the original default, numbered five and six. For the purposes of this example, I'm just going to focus on one. Let's look at Visa. So every credit card in this section is going to have the same information displayed. So every credit card will have these four entries, balance, due date, cycle start, and cycle end. Due date is going to come from the monthly template as is the cycle end date. So remember on the monthly template if we scroll down to the credit card information remember you entered the date of the month on which the payment would be due. You also entered the date of the month on which the cycle ended. So if we look at Visa, which is credit card payment number two. The due date is the 15th. The end of the cycle is the 22nd. And that's what you see here, the 15th, the 22nd. The cycle start is calculated for you based on the cycle end date. The balance is calculated based on the transactions that occurred between the start of the cycle and the end of the cycle. Everything in this section, this credit card balances and due dates section, is based on actuals only. If you entered transactions in the daily transactions worksheet, then the calculations are included and displayed here. If the balance is not zero, then the cell will be highlighted with a red background so you can easily see when you have credit card payments that are coming up. You'll see the, the red background entries. Now, depending on the country in which you have the credit card and the rules and regulations around that particular credit card, you might find sometimes the, the due date or the cycle start or the cycle end date, sometimes perhaps they don't match reality. So they've been set up here based on your expectations defined in the monthly template, but sometimes there are adjustments. When that occurs, to keep everything tracking properly in your file here, you can simply override these dates. Literally go into the cell and over top of the cell just type the date. And the fact that you can and should override dates in that situation is why I recommend you keep a copy of the original template of this budget file so that 
if you run into a situation where you've made an override and perhaps you can't remember what the formula was, of course, why should you have to remember what the formula was? When you are beginning the next annual file, you'll have that template for you. So you'll have the reference of the template. You also have the reference of your existing file that you were using. Again, every credit card has these same entries, same information. So let's look now at the last section, the actual versus forecast. So based on the legend and the highlighting, you'll see green is actual, blue is forecast. Let's look at this in a little bit more detail. On the left in this green table, this is all the information that was entered into the daily transactions worksheet. Again, remember this is account activity, so you're not going to see credit card transactions here. You'll see account activity only, and you'll see it for the filter that's being displayed. I'll talk about those filters in a moment. On the right hand side is the forecast information. This is information from the monthly template, the expected activity, the anticipated entries. If I scroll down here on the forecast section, you'll see the 31st of January is highlighted in yellow. You might be wondering why that would be highlighted in yellow. So remember, yellow background designates the current month. It also designates the current day in this forecasted table. Now, of course, the 31st of January is not the current day. So why would that be highlighted? Well, you won't necessarily have an entry for every single day in the forecasted table. So for example, you'll see the 23rd of January doesn't appear, the 24th doesn't appear. So instead of highlighting the exact date to match today, based on the filter applied to the table, the match will be the best closest date that is less than or equal to today's date. So in this case, because the filter applied to this table is just for January, the closest we can get to today's date is January 31st. So that's why that appears. So let's look at these filters. What I've included for you is two different little blocks, I'm going to call them. Within these blocks, you have a month's blocks, you have a year's block. These blocks work in the same fashion, but for different purposes. In the month's block, you'll see you have all the months of the year. Right now, you'll see in purple is January. If I were to click on February, then you'll see the tables, both of them, both tables are linked to the same blocks. The tables now display only information related to February. So on the left, in the actuals, this is transaction information for the account now displayed. In the forecasted area, this is information from the monthly template now displayed for February. Now you're not limited to just entering one month. If you hover over this little check marks icon, you'll see it says multi-select. If you enable that, then you can enter multiple months. And you'll see that's reflected in your selections. There's another way to do this. You can turn multi-select off. And with multi-select off, you can actually click and hold a month and then drag over three months for the same effect. So whichever is most convenient and comfortable for you, that's how you can manipulate those blocks. 
same situation for the years. Now, the other selection option you have within the blocks is this little clear filter icon. So if I click clear filter, it removes any filters and displays everything. Generally, I don't find that very useful, so I typically stick to one or two months at a time. You'll notice for each table, there is a balance displayed. I want you to be really careful with these balances because the spreadsheet will only display what you asked of it, and sometimes it may not be clear to you what you've asked it to do. Um, I often have to stop and, and think about what's happening with these calculations. So for example, right now you might be looking at this and wondering why does the current account balance not match the actual activity? Well, remember that February is the current month. And the current month, the information is going to be a compilation of actual versus forecast. If I added January and February in this list, then you'll notice the balance matches. So the key element that was missing here, there's a starting balance that's included in these tables. So that's something to consider if you notice the balance being different. Look at what months you have displayed, but also remember that the current activity here is going to be based on a full month, whereas the account balance is going to be based on only activity up until a particular date of that month. So there could always be differences between these balances for a particular month until that month is in the past. And then, oh, my apologies, that's not for the account balance. Let me show you what I'm referring to. The balance here could always be different from the ending balance in the month until the month is over. So if we look at just January, you'll see the balance in actual matches the year at a glance balance. It's not going to match the current balance because we're in February. Something else to keep in mind, if you have multi-select engaged, and you want to look at, say, February and April. You're going to get strange information in the balance sections here because you're looking at months that are not in sequence, not contiguous. So you'll be missing starting balance information from months in between, and that's going to skew the balance information. So just something to be aware of and depending on what you're looking at, you might want to be more selective with your filters. I'm going to go back to just February displayed here because I want to show you some important behavior in these tables. Right now, we're seeing the actual balance is 1,051 in February. Again, this is based on account activity in the daily transactions worksheet. If I were to go to daily transactions and enter some additional transactions. So let's say on the 17th of February and I enter a transaction for, let's say, insurance was due for the car. And let's say that insurance amount was $100. So this is activity within the account itself, column E. So if I go back to dashboard, you'll notice that information doesn't appear here. Now, what if I click on March and then I go back to February? I still don't see that transaction. The reason is these tables are actually pivot tables. 
don't be alarmed. Pivot tables can be your friend. So whenever you make transactions in the daily transactions worksheet, you need to refresh these tables to see changes. Now the file is designed to refresh the tables whenever you open the file. So if you were to save and close and reopen, of course, you would see the changes. However, why would you want to do that? You can simply refresh the tables directly. So whenever you are looking at these tables, it's probably a good idea just to be safe to refresh. How you refresh is you click on anywhere in the table. So anywhere it's green over here or anywhere it's blue over here. When you do that, you'll see a difference in your file menu. So when we're not clicked on the table, look at the menu in Excel. You probably don't have developer identified in your own Excel worksheets, but you certainly have help. Notice up at the top what happens when I click on one of those tables. We have two additional menu entries. So if you navigate to Analyze, all you have to do is click Refresh. And now you'll see our entry has appeared. So this is very important. Click on a table, either one, blue or green, not the balances within the table itself. Go to Analyze, click Refresh. Now, if you look at the drop down here, you'll see there's a Refresh All. Refresh All, in this case, has some restrictions on it due to the structure of this worksheet. So refresh all is very likely to return an error or a warning rather. So you see it complains. That's okay. We're going to cancel it of this. Just don't use refresh all. You don't need to. Just click on the refresh button. It will refresh. Your entries will now appear. Refreshing those tables is very important to get accurate information. So familiarize yourself with that display. So if I click somewhere else, those menu selections are not there. Click on the table, they appear. Analyze, refresh. Just two clicks. It's all you have to do and the information will be reflected here. So that's your dashboard in a nutshell. It's really something that you want to play with yourself and get more familiar and comfortable with. As you grow more comfortable with it, then you'll see there's a lot of information here that can be very helpful for you. Oh, and one more thing. If we're in February now and you scroll down, you'll see February 18th, the current date, is highlighted. That's everything until the next tutorial.